population of the Earth, showing just how much junk there is. Spacecraft can adjust their flight path to miss this man-made cosmic litter. The problem is knowing where it is in the first place. Large pieces are fairly easy, but it only takes a tiny piece to cause disaster. So what can be done about space junk? Well, at the moment, there's no technology for getting rid of it. The best we can do is track it. Now, the US military already does that, in fact. They use radar and can track pieces down to about that size, 20 centimetres across. In fact, there are about 9,000 chunks of the stuff up there that size. The problem, though, is there are millions of pieces smaller than that. And at the moment, we don't know where any of them are. But that's about to change. Now, Mount Stromlo Observatory in Australia has a system that will allow NASA and other space agencies to track even tiny pieces of litter. Uh, here it is. So this is the two-metre telescope, is that is the beam director and yeah. projects a laser beam out towards the target. So I think that Dr Craig Smith is the CEO of EOS Space Systems. EOS uses telescopes and a powerful laser to pinpoint debris thousands of kilometres out into space. What would happen if I'm standing right here as it shoots out? You would certainly go blind. Yeah. It's, a, it's a night eyesight laser. I'd feel a bit warm, I imagine. And start to uh, burn on the skin. Yeah. EOS has been tracking satellites since the 1980s, and their new laser system is accurate enough to track objects 20 times smaller than the current radar system, down to one centimetre in size. Now, you might be wondering how a tiny fleck of space junk that size can be dangerous. Well, the reason is the speed it's travelling at. It's moving through space at 30,000 kilometres an hour. That's 30 times faster than a jumbo jet. And at that speed, just that tiny fleck could pass straight through an astronaut on a spacewalk. A piece of junk the size of that bolt would be enough to take out a satellite, and a piece of junk the size of a golf ball would be enough to take out the space station. The space shuttle is actually hit by micro debris dozens of times during a mission. One of the most serious events occurred several years ago when a tiny speck of paint cracked through many laminated layers of the shuttle's windscreen. It almost led to disaster. If it had gone through all mine, then you have a potential catastrophe and depressurisation. What would happen if I was out there as an astronaut hit by a fleck of paint? That would probably go straight through you. Right. It'd cause serious damage. Yeah. Every time you go on a spacewalk, it's a significant risk. Mapping these objects means the shuttle and even satellites can be launched at the right time to avoid collisions. If you delay or advance the launch uh, by a few seconds, then you'll uh, have a different intersection time and then you no longer have a conflict. This is the laser the engineers will use to find those tiny pieces of space junk. Now, the first thing you'll notice is it's invisible. Not great for television, but the reason for that is that it's an infrared laser. You need the equivalent of night vision goggles to see it, which is what this is. So through here, we can see it. There it is, a beautiful green sparkling light. Now, the basic idea is this laser beam shone up into space. And when it hits a tiny piece of space junk, it sends back this very small reflection. But with a big telescope, you can pick that up. Now, you might imagine you need a mighty powerful laser to do that, which this is. It's 200 watts. In fact, if I stuck my hand in front of the beam there, it would burn a hole straight through it. This is the telescope the engineers will use to track the space junk. Its job is to pick up those tiny reflections of laser light coming back from the debris. And it's incredibly sensitive. That two metre wide mirror can detect the smallest possible reflection, one photon, one particle of light. The whole system is highly accurate. It can detect a piece of space junk, pinpoint it in the whole vastness of space to within just one metre. And you only need one photon, one little particle of light, and you can, you can find the satellite. That's right, we send out about 10 to, 10 to 19 or 10 billion billion photons go yeah. out, and we need one back. An ultra-sensitive camera linked to the telescope can detect and roughly track objects four to 5,000 times fainter than a star. They then tracked in minute detail with the laser to determine the precise orbit. On the left, there's a wide field camera, and then there's a medium field camera and a narrow field. And each one has a higher magnification or zoom uh, in on, on the last screen. The tracking system can pick up about 10 bits of space junk an hour. 
and it's not long before we find one. Here, here we comes, go. Here comes the target. And there we are, tracking it now. We've yeah. detected it and we are tracking it. Ah, oh, got it. It's orbiting Earth 1,632 kilometres, 1,000 miles above our heads. The telescope zooms in for a closer look while the laser fires up. OK, so this is giving you a rough orbit. But this that's good some... enough to then lock your laser onto that. That's right. And get the really accurate orbit. So you can actually see the laser firing. You can see the laser light the now. Yeah. This is the target in there, and this is the laser firing at it. And this, this, is, this system's just guiding the target underneath the crosshair there. 100 times each second, the laser hits the object, sending back time and angle measurements that determine the orbit to an accuracy of less than one metre. That's one less piece of junk for NASA to worry about. But with millions more orbiting Earth, EOS is hoping to set up 10 tracking stations like this around the globe. And a decade from now, they're hoping the lasers will have the ability to actually remove the space debris. The space junk problem is not going to go away anytime soon. Even if we stopped all launches, sent nothing else up there, the number of pieces of junk would still continue to rise. The reason is that big pieces crash into each other, creating lots of smaller pieces. So facilities like this one here at Mount Stromlo that can detect those tiniest pieces of junk are absolutely vital to the future of space travel. Enjoying the ride? There's plenty more yet like the first aid kit that guarantees your emergency skills won't